In this tutorial, I'm going to show how you can generate a PDF that contains a repeating group that spans across multiple pages. You'll see here in my bubble editor that I have this element repeating group user. And what this essentially is, it's a repeating group of all users in my database. I'm setting it to 15 at the max. And then when I click on generate PDF, I'm going to get this output PDF here that includes a title, a description, which you can see on the page here, and then also this repeating group, which is spread neatly across two pages. And you'll also see we've added in a footer here for good measure. The very first thing you're going to need to do is go through the plugins tab of your Bubble Editor and install the PDF Creator plugin. This is a paid plugin that I've developed myself, and you can find it in the plugin marketplace by searching for PDF Creator. Once you've installed this plugin, what you're going to find is you have access to a new visual element. If you scroll down here, you'll see that you now have access to this PDF creator element, and you want to click on this and drop it on your page. You'll see here we have instructions on some certain steps we need to take before we actually get around to generating our PDF. A very important step is to go to your settings tab and enable a checkbox. So we're going to go to settings, we're going to go to general, and then at the very end of this page, you can see here there's an option under advanced options that says expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. And you want to make sure that this box is checked. So leave it ticked there. Once you've ticked that element, what you're going to find is that if you click on any element on the page, so let's just take this text element for example, you have this extra input field down the bottom here called ID attribute. And this is how we're going to tell the PDF creator plugin what specifically to generate a PDF of. You'll see the second step in our configuration instructions here is to drop the PDF creator element onto the page. We've already done that, so nothing else to do there. So let's click on preview for a second and just see what we're dealing with here. So what we have here is our kind of demo group. And we have an employee overview text element. We have a brief description of what's in this repeating group down here. And then we have the repeating group itself. It's a very straightforward repeating group. It contains details on various users that I've made up, just demo data in the database. And you can also see there's this kind of heading section here, which is a, a separate group in and of itself. You'll actually see, if you look at our repeating group here, that it looks as though we're going to be repeating the title on every second line. But what's actually happening there is this group is only visible when the current cell index is one. Gregory John of Bill Cam has a great video on how to put together this layout of having a group with the title and then also the repeating group data. I'm not going to go into detail on it now, but I will link to his video below. So let's keep things straightforward at the start and say we want to generate a PDF of just this repeating group section here. So we have 15 employees coming through in that. And we can see that by finding our repeating group user. You'll see here I'm simply doing a search for all users and I'm just taking 15 rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an ID attribute on this repeating group element. I'm just going to call this my employee info and then I'm going to copy that ID attribute and I just on command C there and then if I go into this button element down here I'm going to add a workflow to it and what I'm going to do is now that we have our PDF creator element on the page we're going to have access to a couple of different actions under workflows so we're going to click here to add an action and then we're going to go to element actions and we're going to generate a PDF creator and now I've just copied that ID attribute that I put on the repeating group. So I'm just going to paste it in there. And that's going to tell the plugin that that is the specific part of the page that we want to turn into a PDF. I'm going to call this file employee info. Auto download is set to yes. That means that it's automatically going to go download into our browser there. Save to database is yes. Now, importantly, if save to database is set to yes, this means that Bubble will save it here under file manager. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna save it under app data, although you can, of course, do that if you wish. Let's move on to scale instead. And this is an important one because there's a bit of a trade-off here between the value you choose in terms of the size and then the quality PDF. So if I choose five, that's going to end up with a PDF that is slightly larger in file size than it would be if I went with two. And if I went with 10, that would be the highest quality PDF, but it would also be quite bulky in terms of the size of the file. So I'm going to start off with five and we'll see how we get on. 
margins. So what I want to do here is maybe before we get to margins, we'll just demonstrate what it looks like at the moment. So let's refresh our preview page. Repeating groups loaded up and let's click on generate PDF. And you'll see there it's coming into our browser. Click on that. We're getting this nicely laid out table and it's all fitting nicely on the page. I don't particularly like the fact that it's so concentrated at the sides here. There's not much of a gap. So that's where margins can be useful. So let's add in some margins. First of all, I'm going to put a margin of 40 pixels on the top, 20 pixels on the left, 40 pixels on the bottom, and then 20 pixels on the right. And you can also choose the format, you know, what size PDF you want. A4 is going to be the most commonly used one, and that's what I'm going to leave it at for now. But let's generate our PDF again and see what it looks like. Okay, um, yeah, I think that looks a lot better, and it's all fitting neatly on the one page. So that's a pretty good start. But let's say now we wanted to also add in the employee overview and the description. What you could do is you could go to the group that houses all three of those elements and you could click on it there so you can see this group here is called group employee overview and it contains the two text elements and the repeating group i'm going to give this the id attribute group overview and again i'm going to copy that and then instead of generating a pdf of just the repeating group i'm going to generate a pdf of the group overall I'm going to set the page break to no for now. I'm going to change that in a second, but I just want to show you the effect of what the page break actually does. So let's refresh our preview page, get rid of those two original PDFs, and hopefully now we're going to get a, a PDF of this whole group with our two text elements and our repeating group inside it. Okay, so this is looking okay at the moment. So you can see here we have our text element on top, our description, our repeating group, but you can see here that something's happening. The very last line of this first page is breaking the image between two pages, which doesn't look great. It would look even worse if it was a text element like this cut off, but I'm not really happy with that. So what I can try first of all is instead of setting the page break to no, let's set it to yes. And the idea is the page break is going to split the PDF into separate pages if it looks as though something like this is going to happen where something gets cut off at the bottom. So let's try that out. And if we scroll down, we can click on generate PDF. And if we open that up, okay, we're getting this blank space at the top, which is not good. And what's happening here is because we set page break to yes, the PDF creator plugin knows that it needs to put the repeating group on a separate page, which it has done. And there's obviously nothing being cut off at the bottom here, but it also wants to keep the text elements quite close to the repeating group, which is how we end up with this big white space. So that's not really ideal behavior either. So what we could do instead of just putting everything in one group, what we could do is we could give separate ID attributes to all our elements. So I'm gonna give this text element here, the ID attribute title. I'm gonna call our second text element description. And then our repeating group, should still have the my employee info ID attribute. So let's go back to our workflow and we're going to say title, comma, space, description, comma, space, and then we'll paste in my employee info. And we'll do this one more time. And we'll click generate PDF. Open that up and we're getting there. So this time, because we separated out the elements, it's keeping the two text elements at the top, but it's putting the repeating group on the new page because it's still considering the repeating group a single element and it needs to put it all on one page entirely. But what we could do is we could break the repeating group up into smaller parts because if we have a look at our repeating group and we right click on it and click on inspect, we're on Chrome at the moment, so we have access to developer tools. What you'll see is if we just highlight the repeating group as an entirety, which would be here, and you can see there, there's the ID I've assigned to it, my employee info. That's how the plugin knows that this is what we want to PDF. But this is actually made up of a bunch of sub elements here. So we'll close that down, but you can see here, each row in the repeating group effectively is a different element. So what we could do is we could target those 
elements individually. It's kind of complex if you assign individual ID attributes to each of these particular groups, but fortunately the plugin is smart enough to work around that. So what you can do, and this works on both groups and repeating groups, but if you take our repeating group here and we put a bracket around it, and it's a square bracket there, and if we go to the end of that and we put another square bracket around that, this is telling the plugin that you want to break the element into smaller elements. And then you're also, of course, going to need to put these square brackets on the ID attribute, the repeating group itself. So again, you're going to go into your repeating group, put a square bracket there, and put a square bracket there. And then if we refresh our preview page, and we generate our PDF, we should see now that we get everything on the one page because it's taking each of these lines in the repeating group as a separate item. And because of that, it doesn't feel the need to put all of the repeating group on one page. I'm going to do one or two more things just to really tidy this up and make it look its best. One of the other things I want to do is just add a footer to our PDF. So if we go back to our workflow, you'll see here there is an option underneath the page break for a footer. And you can put in left footer content and the right footer content. What I'm going to do for the left footer content is just put in Cranford Tech. And then for the right footer content, I'd like to have a page number on each of these pages. And fortunately, again, the plugin is smart enough to do that automatically. So the way you can tell the plugin to do that is you just type in page dash counter. We can change the color of the font and the footer and the size of it. I'm happy enough with how that is. Let's also add a line and see how that looks. Okay, so let's generate that PDF one more time. Open it up. And again, we have our text, we have a repeating group, and you can see here we have this really nice footer at the bottom, Cranford Tech 1, and then if we go to the bottom of the second page, we have Cranford Tech and page 2. So that's how you generate PDFs of repeating groups. I know I went through a lot of different examples there, but I hope that was useful in terms of explaining the mechanics of how the plugin works. And if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section.